So this is the outline of what I'm going to speak on. I'll talk briefly about uh, what some desirable properties of therapeutic antibodies are, how therapeutic antibodies are currently being made with both display and non-display technologies. I'll give an overview of different display technologies that are currently being um, used. And then I'll spend a fair amount of time uh, talking about uh, generating antibody repertoires, which are actually required no matter what type of display technology um, you use and may for many be the rate limiting step in terms of accessing this technology. And then I'll go into details on uh, phage display and on uh, yeast display. I mean, and, and it's interesting the fact that while this technology has been around for 20 years, one can still um, fill a tutorial um, on this topic. And I think what that indicates is while those of us who originally invented the technologies think it's reasonably facile, it still remains relatively artisanal and, uh, and finicky. Um, to access. I don't know if that's your all experience, but we certainly get plenty of requests for assistance. So as, as probably most of you know, antibodies have become an important therapeutic um, class of uh, drugs. Um, for those of you who are as gray as I am, remember uh, that when, uh, uh, you know, after the discovery of hybridoma technology in the 70s, when antibodies were supposed to be magic bullets, they basically were near dead as therapeutic entities because of the immunogenicity of rodent antibodies. And it was really these engineering technologies that made it possible for antibodies to become a useful class of therapeutics, i.e. to remove their immunogenicity by making them look more human. And you can just see that here in this plot of uh, sales of uh, the, uh, the, I think now, 22 licensed uh, antibodies licensed in this um, Country, and it's important to recognize that and I'll show you, antibody humanization and other technologies really didn't come into play until the late 1980s. 